Today, I'm gonna to be going over the five worst things about living in Concord, California, so that way you know what you're getting yourself into if you're looking to make a move out this way. So if you're looking for more information on Concord or any of the surrounding areas, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you know exactly what life is like here in the Bay Area. So here's a little bit about what you can expect for what the five worst things are here in Concord. We're gonna to be touching on public transportation, commute times, population growth, housing costs, and food and nightlife. Starting off with what I would say is the worst on this list, we're gonna be diving into public transportation. For public transportation, really the reason why I say it's kind of the worst on this top five list is because you have one public transportation route and that is BART. If you choose to take BART, it can take you to Oakland, Berkeley, San Francisco, all the way up to Millbrae, which basically touches the peninsula. And you can even go as far south to San Jose and that last stop is gonna be North San Jose. If you're lucky enough to work in any of the cities in between all these stops, then you can go as far as Tri-Valley as well. Now, BART does have multiple stops, so if you're lucky enough to commute to one of these cities that's in between one of the major metropolitan areas, maybe such as the Tri-Valley, then you're going to get pretty lucky with BART's routes. Now, at the end of the day, BART is a great option for many people, but one of the caveats to me specifically is BART's lack of seating. Now, most people that take BART do so because they don't want to be stuck in traffic driving their car. They want to be able to tune out, maybe listen to music, listen to a podcast, watch a TV show. Um, and if you're like me, then you want to kind of cram in some work and get some work done if you're taking that commute. But if you don't have a seat on BART, it makes doing that really, really difficult. My biggest BART hack for Concord BART, which I've mentioned in previous videos, if you're looking to get a seat, is to go to the North Concord BART station. If you get there early enough, and you may have to stand in a little bit of a line, then you will be guaranteed a seat because it's an early enough stop before BART really gets crammed with a lot of people. Now, if you do work in the peninsula, which is very common for my tech people, then you actually can do a BART to Caltrain transfer. If you're not familiar with Caltrain, it's basically the major route or public transportation on the San Francisco Bay Area side, which is gonna be San Francisco all the way down to you know Sunnyvale, Mountain View, and those cities like that. I have one more helpful tip for you when it comes to BART. If you're not familiar with BART, if you're moving out this way and you're kind of figuring out if you're gonna be driving or if you're gonna be taking BART as a you know commutable factor, then I have a link for you below right there in my description, which is BART's trip planner. This will allow you to do what I like to call a mock commute. And essentially it'll show you the reoccurring departure and arrival times and how many stops it's gonna take you to get to where you leave off to where you're arriving. Moving on to number two, which is commute times. Now, if you refuse to take BART like many people do, you're gonna wanna know how long it will realistically take you to drive from your home all the way to your place of work. And this is where Apple Maps or Google Maps is very, very helpful. You have the feature to be able to set the exact days and times that you'd be leaving your house to your place of work. It's really, really essential to do this because some people without traffic can get from Concord to San Francisco from anywhere to 35 to 45 minutes. But if there's traffic, if there's accidents, that can change drastically. For many people, it's not so much the commute from home to work that's difficult, it's the commute back home from work that can be grueling for many, many people. Peak traffic times in the morning going to the major cities is gonna be anywhere from seven to 9 a.m. and then coming back home is gonna be anywhere from four to 6 p.m. But since tech workers have a lot of flexibility within their jobs, a lot of them like to get a head start and that's when traffic can start as early as 2.30, even three o'clock p.m heading back home. Since there's so many of you that could be having different commute times to different cities in the Bay Area, I didn't really want to give any, you know, time frames out there because it can be all so much different. But I will say a lot of the clients that I work with, they have a lot of freedom and flexibility. For instance, some people are able to leave after 9 a.m. and miss the majority of traffic that most people have to do. And then same thing going back home, if they leave after 6 p.m., it's gonna be a lot lighter congestion and traffic wise if you have the freedom to be able to kind of shift around your hours for maybe that two, three, or even four days that you have to go into the office per week. So after getting some insight on the commuting, this segues perfectly into our third topic, which is gonna be population growth. Concord's population growth has essentially decreased one to 2% year over year since the pandemic. Although you probably expected me to say that the population of Concord's been growing year over year, this actually is not enough of a decrease as we see in many, many other cities throughout the Bay Area. We all know that Californians regularly cash out on all the equity that they've built over the years in their homes, 
and move to more affordable areas of California like Sacramento or even out of state like Kansas City. But with the amount of low inventory that we're seeing here in Concord and really California in general, it's making not only locals and residents feel like we're bursting at the seams, but also people that are moving here really just don't feel like they have enough housing options. And not to mention just how fed up locals are in general with how bad the Bay Area's traffic has gotten over the last 10 years or so. So of course, businesses here in Concord want as many people either moving here or visiting here as much as possible. Residents do find it difficult to cope with the traffic, the congestion, and overall busyness of their city that they're just not used to. To add to all of this, Concord is becoming a real hotspot for tech workers that have the freedom to only work about two to three days in office, some who are just totally work from home. So if you only have to commute one, two, maybe even three days per week, that commute from Concord to San Francisco or San Jose or Oakland makes it seem a lot more worth it as the years go on because of Concord's affordability compared to these other cities. So in this sense, it really, really justifies tech workers or anybody that has the freedom to work from home to be a little bit further out these major metropolitan areas and invest in a city like Concord where they're gonna get a good return as time goes on. So with all of that being said, this brings us to our fourth topic, which is housing costs here in Concord. This one is a double-edged sword for both Concord residents and those looking to move here to Concord. Although existing homeowners in Concord love the fact that they are gaining appreciation and equity, for those locals who are now ready to get into the Concord housing market are finding it a bit frustrating. And as mentioned previously with many tech workers or really other than tech workers who have the Ability to work from home and as mentioned previously with many workers who are moving to the area for just more affordable housing costs to them this doesn't really help the case for those locals who already feel priced out of the market as it is another issue in the city of Concord is all the new construction homes that are being built are not only very high priced such as single-family homes in the 1 million and up range or townhomes in the higher seven to eight hundreds up to nine hundred thousand range there's not a lot of condos being built that's going to service those people who need things in the you know more five six or even seven hundred thousand dollar range as of right now inventory is still very very low in concord we are seeing some signs of hope with inventory ticking up just a bit and that's really happening as interest rates tick down just a bit so there's another double-edged sword as interest rates start to go down, inventory starts to come up, but that's also gonna make competition more fierce for those who are already finding it difficult to afford a home right now. During quarter four of 2023, we did see a slight dip in the market with multiple price reductions across the board in Concord, but as a whole across condos, townhomes, and single family homes, prices were up 5% compared to this time last year. Last up on this list coming in at number five is food and nightlife in Concord. Now I am a huge advocate of small businesses here in the Bay Area, so this is in no way to have any ill will or talk badly about any of the businesses in Concord, but I do wish we had more food options here in the area, specifically in the downtown area. If you're not familiar with the veranda in Concord, the veranda was a huge addition just about four or five years back that allows residents to not only have a good place to go shopping, but spend some weekends and especially even holiday shopping around this time of year. I do hope that Concord has more opportunities to get rid of office space, which they did with the veranda and put up something that residents are really gonna enjoy because if you've been there, the veranda gets really, really packed. So to me, that just really shows that Concord residents as a whole want another place like that to be able to go. Now, as far as nightlife goes, of course, this isn't a city like Oakland or San Francisco. And when I say nightlife, I don't really mean clubs or anything like that. I just mean more family centric things for people to be able to do. So the veranda is a good option. There is Sun Valley Mall. There's of course bowling alleys and things like that. But other than that, your options are pretty scarce here in Concord. Many residents throughout Contra Costa County will go to Walnut Creek, which does have a lot of food options and just a really larger downtown. But I do wanna heavily encourage you to go to downtown Concord, go to these surrounding areas, some of these areas that I mentioned, because there are great restaurants and great businesses throughout Concord. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you gained some knowledge and insight about what's happening in Concord and really just getting a feel for what it's like to live here in Concord. And if you did gain some insight, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we have plenty of other videos on Concord as well as the surrounding cities of Concord. And if you want additional information, additional links to click around, be sure to go to the description here at the bottom of the page and we will see you guys on the next video.